everyone. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're all doing okay. So, my next guest. You will have definitely seen him in lots of different television shows, from Torchwood to Hollyoaks. He's a fantastic actor, a lovely man, and he's Welsh. Please take a look at my interview with Kai Owen. Oh, so my first question is, where does your love of theatre and performing come from? Um, well, you know, it was from a young age in school, really. Um, it, it, it's something that I kind of just did, if that makes sense. It, I, I kind of, I, I just had a, a, a confidence. I wasn't shy to speak in front of the class. I wasn't, um, you know, some people you could stand up and read a bit from this book and some kids would shy away. I, to me, it was like, yeah, I'll do it. No problem at all. And, and I was and I was always been blessed with a loud voice, you know, so nobody ever had to tell me to speak up. In fact, it was the opposite. You know what I mean? So <laughs> so I was so it was just there. And, and I, I just enjoyed it. And since it, since a very, very young age, you know, since primary school, I was involved in nativities and plays and on stage and. And local Estelle Vods, um, the teacher sort of put me in. You should do this, you should do this. And yeah. you can be, I, I went to the Estelle Vod and um, competed in the Adrov section, in the reciting section. And uh, I had the loud voice and, you know, I won a couple of awards and things. And um, and I just had it in me. And it was nurtured really well by some brilliant school teachers. Yeah. I, 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 if, if, if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't have been shown the way they took me to Theatre Cluid to watch stuff kind of thing on little outings. And they, you know, they took us when I was 17, 16, 17, they, they took us to the West End to watch Blood Brothers and things. And it was like, wow, this is there. And, then, and it was the teachers really that said, you, you can do, you could do this if you wanted to. So it was, it was from a very early age of just uh, of performing and, and yeah, and just being nurtured by some brilliant teachers really. Yeah. And so tell me, so you started doing it then when you were younger. What was the journey like to becoming an actor? Was it difficult? And did you kind of fall into it? Was there something that you did that kind of led on to another job? Yeah, I think it was it, it was again, I will like going back to what I said just a minute ago. Um, my teachers were really, really brilliant. I think if, 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 if I didn't have those two teachers, I probably wouldn't be doing it now. I came from I come from a place called San Luis and in North Wales and there wasn't anybody around to look up to or, or ask for advice of how to become an actor. People were telling me, you can, you, you, you could become an actor. You could be an actor. You could, you could be on stage. So no, okay. So my interest spiked from there. And then as, as we went on in school, I got involved in the drama, in the drama group at school. Cause there wasn't any, there wasn't really much of a drama group in school. But then, it, uh, then when I was in year four, which I think is a year eight now, year nine, I can't, yeah. Um, and we had a new English teacher and and somebody said to me that she's really, really quite keen on drama and she's really hot on drama and she loves it. Her name is Joy Ossel and um, she really loved drama and she created a drama group. And through that, I got more and more involved and more and more involved with it. And then we did school productions. We did Oliver, Fiddler on the Roof, Oklahoma. And I was in those singing, doing it all and really loving it and really falling in love with it. And then being guided then by Joy Ossel and our music teacher, George Lloyd, on a path to show, well, look, you can do this. There's drama schools. There's B-Tech courses in the local techs. <clears throat> there's also a thing called the National Youth Theatre of Wales, which is a four-week course. And they showed me onto that as well. Yeah. And then, you know, so they, they helped pave the way of, of, of from school to the National Youth Theatre of Wales. Um, and then when I... When I Audition for the National Youth Theatre Wales. I was going to go on to do a BTEC course in San Bristol Technical College, and the the head the head of the um, uh, the National Youth Theatre Wales at the time was Paul Clements, and he just kind of said to me, "Look, you don't have to go to the BTEC course. You could go to drama school. You know, you could do this." So I didn't know that was available. So yeah. look, luckily, a lot of people guided me along the way. My family were supportive, but they didn't have a clue how to sort of guide yeah. me to do it. It was just you know completely nobody that I knew was from that background so um with with, with with the help of them brilliant teachers and guidance that's how I got then and then I actually went because Paul Clements was at Welsh College of Music and Drama but I actually ended up going to Mountview in, okay um, yeah and then I, so I landed in Mountview in 1995. Wow that was the year I was born oh Christ <laughs> <laughs> 
I was well, so I was twenty when I went. I was twenty. I had. I I went. I did get accepted at Welsh College. Uh, I did go and audition for Welsh College, but then I um, I went for a week and I dropped out. I I wasn't ready. I wasn't right. I was very very homesick, and I just wasn't mentally right. I was I, I like I was coming from a small town in North Wales, and I and I just wasn't. I'd never done anything like that ever ever. I didn't know, so I wasn't ready. But I did know I wanted to go. I knew yeah. I wanted to do it. So I came back home and I worked in a local butchers and washing up and serving in the counter for another year. And then and then Walsh College said they'd keep a place open for me very kindly. But I did audition for other drama schools and I went to I ended up auditioning for Mount View and really liking it. And and, and I went and settled after having that year out, which then I think did me the world good because I was 20 then going to Mount View. You do get a natural you do get a feel for it, because really and truly, I should have, you know, I I, I was a classic um case to go to Welsh college really because I could speak Welsh mm. I love Wales love Cardiff and all that but I just there was just something about it that 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 just didn't sit right with me I wasn't and nothing about the people nothing at all and then I and then I went to, I auditioned at Central and I liked that as well and I've never really been to London other than school trips that I mentioned go and see Blood Brothers yeah. so I didn't know so talk about from San Luis to Cardiff is big enough but San Luis to 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 London is even, but I just felt Mount View was I don't know, there was just something there. And, and I think that's important, I think, when you're looking for it. You know, if you're lucky enough to get off a place, go f- go and have a feel about it and just see how it, see what these, what, what the building's like, the atmosphere like and going. And, and I just felt, you know, I felt that it was right for me. And, and, I, and as it turned out, it was, I loved it there. Yeah. Yeah. And what was your training like? You know, talk us through that. It was really intense. I loved every second of it. I loved it. It was brilliant. It was long, long days of, um, nine till 10 o'clock in the night in, in the evening and we had to sign in at Mount View um, and if you weren't signed in by 10 to 9 you weren't allowed in for the rest of the day and they really taught us discipline and the the, 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 the lady at the desk Kathy who's still at Mount View now and was there long before I was wow. she's strict man believe you me if you weren't signed in you ain't coming in for the day so it taught you time t- timekeeping and discipline straight away which is mm-hmm. vital in our business yeah. and um I loved it. I met the best people, the best friends, friends for life, and the courses and the teachers were, were, were just brilliant. I did the acting and musical theatre course, so in year, in the first year, it's basically a bit of both, and then for the second year, you sort of specialise in one sort of field, so I did musical theatre in the second year, and it was just so intense, really intense singing, um, working on harmonies, audition preparation. Yes. Uh, and then in your third you do you do shows which was which is great for the, for the for the public and for the industry to come and watch yeah amazing amazing and can you remember your very first role after drama school yeah my first job was um was playing ariel in the tempest so i i, I trained in musical theater and falling in love and gone to see all the shows in town and you know i wanted to be marius in les mis and things like that and chris in miss saigon <laughs> but I ended up playing Ariel in the Tempest um, wow. uh, at Stafford Castle. They, Stafford Castle, they, they still do this uh, Shakespeare festival, uh, and they have it open air at the, at the castle, yeah. and it's brilliant. And I did two. I did I did the I did the Ariel one year, and I did the following year, I did Richard the third. So that was my first professional job was Ariel in the Tempest. Wow. And did you always want to? Because I know we'll talk about um, doing acting work, straight acting work afterwards. But did you always want to do musical theatre? Was that where you always saw yourself? Yeah, I did actually. Again, again, I didn't really know much. I, I, I sort of focused so hard on the musical theatre because we did, we did study some plays in school, but we did, we did musicals. You know, we did Oklahoma, Oliver Fiddler, and, and I loved the music, and I loved Les Mis. And whenever I could go to London, I would go then when I was old enough to go, and I'd go and see shows rather than plays I'd, I'd go into the west end rather than to the national and things and uh so i just and i just loved singing i've always loved singing anyway but i just loved the uh, the buzz it gave me and uh some of those huge shows so that was my dream really was to be um was to be in les mis and do things like that yeah wow awesome and i've weird. never and, and i still haven't been in les mis. i still haven't done a musical isn't it weird you've ne- you've never done one no, nope, never really, ne- never done. I've sung in shows, I've sung in a lot of shows, and uh, I've done pantos, but I've sung in, but I've never actually done a, a proper musical as a job, like, this is a musical I'm doing. I've had plays with songs, plays with music, um, but never done a musical, never. That's so weird. And, that's, and I left, this is 22 years ago, I, dra- I graduated now, so I've never, I've never done a musical. <laughs> 
my gosh. So it's crazy. It is strange, isn't it, how, um, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people and they say that your path just sometimes doesn't go where you think it's going to go. Yeah. It could have gone down. More. It definitely could have gone, you know, because at the time when I was auditioning for the, when I was just coming up to graduating from Mountain View and, and pretty much all of all of our third year shows were musicals. You could have chosen, there's an option um, in your last sort of term, there was when I was there, to either do a musical or a play the musical theatre group get a chance to do a play. So a lot of them chose to go and do a play, a great play called The Weir. Um, another clearing, The Clearing. And But I stayed in the group to do Sweeney Todd, the musical. <laughs> so, you know, even then I didn't. I yeah. just stayed and did the musicals. Um, and then, um, which still require a lot of acting anyway, as we know now anyway, you know what I mean? So it requires it all. So, um um, but I was auditioning at the time as we were coming out of Mountain View, about to graduate. Um, we were, we, we'd gone to open auditions for Les Mis and I was getting recalled for and recalled down to the last sort of, you know, final workshops for Les Mis. And um, during this time as well, I got an agent and I, and I got put up for um, the Tempest at Stafford Castle. And, and I got the Tempest at Stafford Castle, you know. So that's how it worked out. Maybe if I'd have just stayed on and just maybe got into Les Mis, I'd have had a different path, but actually, because I got here in the Tempest, I went down a completely different path again. So you're right; it's it's whatever it takes you. You know, you really have no clue. Yeah, and would you still like to be in a musical? I desperately be in a musical. I I still have a dream to be in Les Mis. I still could play Marius. I know I could. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I will go and see a musical more than I will. You know, I'd much rather go yeah. see a musical than I would a play. And that's you know. Uh, just because it's pure escapism and like it, oh I love it. Yeah. It is it's something I say to the children all the time when we do shows. I say to them, look, you know, people are desperate to be taken on a journey somewhere yeah. else. And yeah. Yeah. You know, with musicals, okay, I mean some of them obviously are based on truth, but a lot of the time it's very upbeat. They're there to Indeed. make people happy. Yeah. You can just go, you know, for two hours, get in the theatre, and then and then just and take you away and, and and i do love that about it and i still i love the cheesy ones i love the camp ones i love the dark the blood brothers you know the i love it all the tragedy of them all it it, it is it's, it's that it's that journey i think that i enjoy and uh and the exhilaration and, and, and i don't i don't feel I don't, I don't watch musicals as an actor i watch a play as an actor which is strange but as a musical i'm like a massive fan <laughs> I think that's the thing it's such a so, it means so much to so many different people doesn't it it does didn't it yeah 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 and I think you know when you you can listen to a score or, or a bit of music like you say it could be the cheesiest poppiest yeah. but it's like oh this is brilliant like it just stirs something inside me and, that, and that's it you know what I mean it just gets something in there and I go oh, it's brilliant yeah yeah I still you... listen to, I listen to in the car I sing all oh, day long yeah, yeah, I mean, all day long. have you got a favorite one um yeah I would say um I'm a big fan of Blood Brothers and Les Mis, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I mean, yeah, I love Blood Brothers. It's one of it's one of the first ones that we saw in the school. And, yeah, I've seen it several times since. And it's... When it's done well, I don't think there's anything better, really. And, and I did that in school. It's a good one for kids to do, actually. It's a really good one. I think it's available. And the play, the play is very good as well. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's just... A, but, um, yeah, and I, and I do like Sweeney Todd as well. Sweeney Todd is another belter. So there's, there's some great ones out there, though. Yeah. But for the, my all-time favourite is, I, I would say, Blood Brothers. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. And tell us about your um, first TV job. How did you get that? What was that like for you? And the first, my first ever TV job actually came through a friend who who I so I did the job at Stafford Castle with, which is Ariel and the Tempest and then the following year I did Richard III and there's there's an actor in there called who <clears throat> who was in two productions with me his name's Alex Lowe and um Alex had got a job the following just after we finished Richard III doing a, a show called Fun at the Funeral Parlor for BBC Choice which is the old BBC Choice channel and it was written by some of the lads from the Fast Show and it was a silly comedy about a funeral directors in Wales and they were the worst funeral directors and uh, it would be on it would be on BBC it'd probably be on like BBC Three now if it was if it was on it was a daft daft thing and there was a couple of Welsh legends in there Will Thomas was in it and stuff and and a lot of people that you'd know familiar comedians that were on the Fast Show and yeah. Tony Way was in it who's now in Afterlife with Ricky Gervais and Reese Thomas and it's Alex Lowe was in it and uh, they were after a Welsh detective just to come in for an episode and 
have a laugh. And Alex recommended me for the job, and I just got and I just got offered it straight away. So that's what that was my first TV job, but at the funeral parlor. Yeah. Oh wow, that's yeah. really because you kind of don't. I don't know. You just don't think that somebody's a recommendation would just land you it. Yeah, and I think, and, and then, and then I was in the second series of it then, playing a different character. It was one of those sort of series that you just turn up and it's a bit bonkers. But um, it was very daft, and I worked with, and actually, I had a good few days on it really filming, and um, I worked with uh, the guys, and I worked with Mark Williams, Mark Williams on it, and Tom Baker. So it was really good. And Charlie Higson was there, so there were some really good people on my first job. I had a really good laugh. Yeah. And did that then lead on to more TV or did you go? No, I didn't and... really do much TV after that then for a long time. I didn't yeah. do anything for it. For it. I, 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 um, it was more theatre then. I, I, I pretty much worked constantly in, in theatre for, for, for a good few years. That would have been in 1999 um, for the film, quite good with dates. So uh, that would have been, that was 1999 that I filmed that. And then I didn't really do any TV until 2002. Okay. So, but I did, I, I was pretty much, um, it was pretty much all a lot of theatre then for those sort of three years. And I, most of the time spent at the Theatre Cluid. Yeah. So I was there. And then um, after that, I I, 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 um, I got a job in, in, in S4C in, in, in a show called Trevland in Welsh. And I was just going to say, because you said you spoke Welsh, how do you find um, acting in Welsh compared to acting in, is it any different to you? Well, what what is different, I think, is... I am I'm fluent in Welsh and you know I, I I'm bilingual and um but I class myself as an English language English is my first language you know my parents I spoke English growing up but I learned it in school um and um and I've just kept I've been lucky enough to keep it going so I can I can speak fluent Welsh I think in English you see so like and, and that's that that's the thing you know so when you're doing the line it, it's 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 I don't think it comes as natural to me you know what I mean as if I was if I was, um, um, you know, acting in English, and if I sort of, you know, uh, forgot a line of it, I can sort of ad lib quicker in English. Yeah. While in Welsh, I, I'd be, I'd be struggled. I wouldn't have the confidence to sort of carry it on there. But actually, once I've got the lines down and learned the lines, you know, it, 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 it's okay actually. It, it, it focuses me a little bit more actually. And um, I haven't done any Welsh TV for a while, but but actually, once you get in the swing of it, it's, it's. I did it. I did a, I did Trevland for a good couple of years, and then I was in a series, <coughs> excuse me, called Tipping Ostard, um, for about three years, which was pretty much like a soap, um, okay. but it was on like three or four times a week, and it was brilliant. So I got really good. I got well, uh, uh, well practiced at that, and so it was it, it was good. So it's, it's, it's use it or lose it, really. I guess it's like a discipline, isn't it? It's like another yeah. discipline you know, that you you know yeah. you got it's another string to your bow, but also it it makes you like you say more concentrated. You have to really focus. It. Yeah, you know, I do. I really do have to learn the lines in Welsh. While in English, go yeah. <laughs> yeah I pretty much make it up as I go along. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, how do you feel like when you're um, given a part? Are you quite? Do you get quite stressed about learning, or does it come quite natural to you? Do you just? I've been like, very lucky with that so far. So far, I'm 45 this year, and it's my memory is still pretty good. I, I, I'm. Uh, I'm quite a quick learner and um and and, and i enjoy learning actually enjoy enjoy the memory test of it yeah. um so i don't get stressed about it too much no because i go if you put the work in you'll learn it and there's nothing better knowing that you don't i know it so it's that, that that's that's a good feeling that so it is because you're you feel much more comfortable before you even start so then... i know it i know it so don't worry i know what I was, uh -huh. or i know what i'm supposed to say and that's the good thing you know what i mean you know, we do forget something you know people people do dry and they don't but like you know what you're supposed to say so just make something up and get on with it yeah and I think as well then if you're given a note or a direction that you think oh god you know that could really throw you if you don't know what you're doing whereas if you know yeah. if you know what it's supposed to be you much more I always feel much more open to what's going on and it's the same as anything you know preparation is key just just learn you know uh, I wouldn't you know I would go into rehearsals knowing it quite well but not not hugely off, not, not massively off book I suppose but you, you can still use the script for the first few days first week first two weeks you know what I mean but but know that you, you sort of know it you yeah know, no. it's just a quick glance it's just a quick glance because it does free you up massively and you don't want the stress of of having to learn the lines and things when you're working on something new a new bit of writing um where actually they you know it changes and it can be changed that's that can be quite stressful because you got to relearn relearn and stuff and all that 
Yeah. But if it's a classic text that's set and works, you know, get to know it, get to know it and get, you know, prepare yourself. Yeah. And do you have um, a career highlight or highlights that have just been amazing for you? Yeah, I think I've been very lucky with 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 a lot of stuff that I've done. I re, you know, and, and met some brilliant people and worked with some brilliant people. <laughs> but I've got to say, um, doing Torchwood was 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 a huge huge highlight for me. Torchwood just Torchwood just grew from strength to strength, from BBC Three to BBC Two to BBC One, to then being shot and filmed in America. And we went over to America to work and filmed it in Hollywood, in Los Angeles, at the, on the Warner Brothers lot, being flown over, flown back and forwards, and being treated so well. Um, and Torchwood still sort of is still around, still kicking around. I still do the audio books for Torchwood, we do the audio dramas, and we do conventions and comic cons all over the world. Um, so I think torture has been a huge huge part of my life really and, and as a highlight it's been i've had some jobs that have been brilliant and i've enjoyed probably a bit more you know what i mean while, while i've been doing them but as a yeah. highlight torture has just been it, it's huge for me yeah i guess like it's it's something that you never it's not that you never think you'll do but it's always kind of like at the top there isn't it? you know you look yeah. at these kinds of programs and these series that run and you think god wouldn't that be incredible you know but yeah yeah not striving for it and it's not that you don't you'll do it but you just get other jobs don't you and they just come along and come along and then yeah. you're, all, you're doing it and you think wow yeah, yeah it's it's you know we, we, we didn't know that there was going to be a fourth series of torture you, ne- you never know after the end of the first series what oh we've been recommissioned oh great then, then you know but this one's going to be BBC two and then third series bbc three then we didn't hear anything for a long time and they said no there will be a fourth series but it's going to be shot in america so it's like what this is bonkers and like it's not that i wasn't it wasn't my favorite job i, I you know i was I've done a few jobs, you know, I did, I did Hollyoaks and I, I think it was, it was my happiest job that was, you know, and I did another job called Rocket Man in, in, that was filmed in Newcastle and I, and I, and still to this day, that it's probably one of my favourite jobs just because of the whole time of it was just lovely, you know, yeah. the, what was happening in my personal life and the people I was working with. So looking back, you know, Torture is probably the best job, but actually at the time, you know, it, there's, that goes with it as well. Um, so I've been very lucky, but working in America with Torture, yeah, nothing beats that. Yeah, I bet. Absolutely. And if you could make a film with anyone, if it was your choice, who would you cast in your own show? Who would it be? Oh, I would do it with a lot of mates because I trust them all dearly. I'd do it with Christian straight away, Christian yeah. Patterson. I'd have him there, me and Christian. Christian to write it and probably direct it with me. And, 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 I. Oh, oh. he has a legend, yeah. I yeah. love him to bits. my best mate. So I'd do it with Christian I'd have, I'd, and I would do uh, jobs for the boys and the girls and friends and stuff and get all the people that I trust yeah. and who have been loyal to me into it as well. And, um, you know, on the script, I'd get good director's inputs that I've got and things. So... Yeah, lots of lots of close friends. Christian Patterson, Eve Miles, I reckon I'd have Eve on, and some some other great mates as well. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there, there's some. I've been very lucky to work with so many people. But uh, I think that's the thing, isn't it? You know, when you're in an industry where you you're so lucky that you've got loads of great friends. You know, what yeah. what you it, respect their work. You know, and you you'll have a great time while you do it. It's like yeah, when, yeah, yeah. I could cast a film now with all you know. Like, Oh, I know Marcus Jones, Steph Rodri, Eve, you know, and oh, there's just some of my friend Tonya. Uh, there's just so many, you know, my wife, you know, get her, get her, get her in as well, you know, and things like that. So <laughs> be lovely. Yeah. Yeah, lush. And um, I always ask some random questions. And yes, my... I love this. I love it. <laughs> and my first one is, if you went to a restaurant and you were allowed a three course meal and you could have whatever you wanted, what would it be? No, I love my food. Army. Who does uh, name a Welsh person that doesn't? Oh. I, I, like, come on. <laughs> well, I'd like spice, I suppose. And then, oh God. The thing that I can I can have whatever I want. So, so Anything, yeah. yeah. I'd say I like I, I I I love my food, but I I, I just like my simple. I, God, that's a really good question. <laughs> I'll have a prawn cocktail to start. Okay. I know that I'm going to have a prawn cocktail because that's just coming to my mind. A good prawn cocktail. Proper big prawns. None yeah. of the 
Oh no, a load of it, a, a load of prawn cocktails with chili and lime and all the curry, like loads of curry. And it was good, yep. cooked to you know, made to my, my good, good, good sauce and but good fresh prawns that smell the sea. Um, chili, lime, coriander, good tomatoes, all that sort of stuff. And then for the main course, um, <laughs> I'll go for a curry, a really spicy curry. I love curry. Yeah, uh, a lamb curry. Um, if 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 it, if it, if the restaurant did the best lamb curry in the world, I would get that one. Yeah, right. nice and spicy, good lamb, lo- lots of good chili, lots of lots of garlic in it. <coughs> and rice and a good good naan bread. Naan, um, you can't be a good. Yeah, man. yeah. Uh, and and good 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 big 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 fat naans. I had an amazing curry up in Bradford when I was working in Bradford, and the naans were about this big, and they were just so fresh out of the oven and crispy and light. And that. then yeah yeah, and I'd probably have something chocolatey for dessert. Yeah. Oh, yeah. something chocolatey. Mm, yeah. Like a triple chocolate sponge cake with like i like hot and cold so it's one of that yeah oh yeah yeah good shout like yeah. when you have like fudge cake and then you like the cream oh. yeah 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 similar, similar to that you know because i do like steak i like and i like all food i like everything there's nothing that i don't like so that so that could but that that would be something that would really satisfy me actually yeah and what is your favorite time of year what would you say is the best time of year best season for you oh that's a lovely question I like spring. I like cold, frosty mornings when the sun is shining and the sky is blue. Um, I love I love Christmas. I'm a huge fan of Christmas, but it's never cold enough. No. But that's the thing. I like it. You know, I like the cold, frosty morning. So late winter, early spring, those that, that that sort of season. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the time that everybody always poo poo, and you're like, oh, it's my favourite. <laughs> yeah, I, late late winter, early spring. You know, when it's there's a bit of frost on the, on the, on the ground and, and it's chilly and the, the sky is blue. Those, those those fresh mornings. Yeah, that's what I like. And um, what is your favourite or the most um, common saying that you have? Fair play. Fair play. <laughs> fair play. Fair play. Fair play. I just um, said quite like typically Welsh. Loads of Welsh people say that. Fair play. No, no, fair play, fair play. Um, yeah, fair play. Um, yeah. At the moment, is Bobby, did your school work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. I can imagine. How is how is lockdown going with, like, homeschooling and stuff? Is that stressful? <laughs> it, it, it's OK. He's been really good, fair play. My wife's brilliant with him. And uh, he's he's... He, he gets his head down and does it. He enjoys it. The school's been brilliant, actually, because they email every day. Oh, cool. So every morning they get they get an email. He gets an email off his teacher and uh, what to do for the day. <clears throat> so that's really good. Yeah. 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 I know some people I've been interviewing and they're like banging their heads against a brick wall. I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> no, it's been good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's testing because they it, they get distracted. That's what it is. Just, yeah. they, in school they haven't got the distractions, so he's just you know. It's, so yeah. And the thing is, like, your home environment is your home. It's not your work, is it? You no, know exactly. You, you know yeah. you're. Like for me, I work obviously part time from home, so you know I've got I'm in the zone. I've got, but once you move from one that particular room or that desk or that, you know you you're gone, aren't you? And yeah, I think absolutely. you're looking at kids and love them. They're like I, I can see the trampoline outside or like you know, yeah, exactly ice cream's calling. They, they yeah, no, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm quite lucky that I've managed to do some online tutorials with some of the children that I teach. And it's hilarious because they'll be they'll have locked themselves in their room and they're having a little bit of a sing. And all of a sudden you can hear, Mum, do you want Chris for that? You know? <laughs> <I> <laughs> they're know. like, Mum, just sing. <laughs> the most hilarious thing. And they're like, I don't get this when I come to your house. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, because like obviously your parents still want them to do it, but they're in their environment and of they're not. Of course. Yeah, not yeah, 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 yeah. It. So do you have a do you have a, do you have your own little theatre school or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my own theatre company, Brilliant. Um, and so we range from three to sixteen. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, so it's nice. I mean, obviously we can't do our usual um, classes and stuff, and but I do teach a lot of one-to-one um, singing and acting sessions, so I've managed to keep Great. quite. Yeah. Because you can do it all. I mean, I think I think you know. I think there's Zoom now, and Facebook, and yeah. Skype is going to open up a lot of uh, 
Oh, but but that... I, think people will be, I think people will be having auditions via Zoom. I, mean, I know people have been auditioning via Skype and things before, but I think there'll be more and more of that. Because yeah. casting does go, well, sod the room, we'll just get them on Zoom. Yeah, I think the thing is, you know, it's it's actually, it's proven very um, useful and actually pretty good. You know, I know you've got obviously internet connections and stuff, but things like that are so good nowadays, aren't they? Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh God, it's brilliant, yeah. And I think, you know, it's so much more cost effective for people. You know, why travel up and down the country for anyone and hire out the spaces and you're this, that and the next thing when you don't need to. A hundred percent. And you know what? Doing it like this now is, you know, it's it's it, it's it's pretty much like a self tape anyway. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you, you've got the angle. So I could audition for you like as this now, do you know what I mean? And read and, you know, you can it, it, it's people can watch it. I think it's better because yeah. um. so I think I think that I think that will be you will hear more of that, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, like I say, you know, we have had a few little challenges, but mainly it's it's worked pretty well. You know, it's Brilliant. just not the same contact, is it? You know, particularly yeah. when I'm taking the littler ones. You know, I yeah. think the one is seven that I've got at the minute <clears> on <throat> Skype sessions. And it is tough because, yeah, yeah. they do get distracted and, you know, you're trying to, like, show them how to do something. I'm, you know, trying yeah. to do a smaller space because, obviously, I've got the tripod and everything set up. So it is difficult. Yeah. Um, but I mean, honestly, it's worked pretty well, and I'm 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 really grateful actually, because yeah, I could have just not had anything. Well, so. that's great. That's great, and you know, and and that's that's credit to all your hard work before. You know, it, it's paying off now that you've got this. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, brilliant. So pleased, and um, we'll just get back to it when when we can, really. You know, absolutely, and that, absolutely. That's how it is. And um, my last question for you is: after lockdown, do you know what's coming up next for you? <laughs> No, I don't. Um, sadly, um, I would like to do Panto this Christmas with with um, with Christian that we do most years in Stoke, but uh, I'm not very hopeful, so we don't know. We don't know. Um, I'm currently uh, as a I'm, I'm currently just um, doing a 12 week personal trainer course, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm training to be a personal trainer, a nutritionist, and things, and. Um, just to get something else on yeah. my bow while because I don't know what's what's going to be like so um so we'll see that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for now and then we don't know what this industry is going to be like but but um I'm, I'm hoping it'll be panto so we can do that but I I, I don't know I don't know yeah. I know that thing you you've just got to just got to take it day by day haven't you and yeah. I think you know the reality is we gotta we gotta <laughs> keep the show in yeah then, if that means that everything is shut until next year, although nobody wants that, better that than having to go back and forth. Do you know, I, was, I spoke to Christian this morning, actually, and actually said, look, just, just, just say that everything's just cancelled for this year. That's it. Because people will listen and that's it. Give them the help and that's it. That, that's it. Stop. We don't know. So it's, it's the it's the in, in limbo that's that, that's quite hard, I think, for a lot of people. And, yeah. You know, but, but um, I think... Exactly. Close it, starting next year. So, so who knows, really? And I've always fancied doing the personal training thing, and I just thought, now is the time. If I don't do it now, yeah, I won't do it. So, um, at least I'll have some sort of qualifications. And it's and as for actors, it's important to have something to fall back on. Oh God. Um, I think, and I've never had that really. And I've always gone, oh, I wish I could. You know, when I was living in London at the time, and we don't, I live in Warwickshire now. But when I was living in London, I went, oh, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a taxi driver, maybe I'll do some. It was always something that I just had something to for the in between times, which I think is important for your head as well. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I'm doing this course now, so that's quite. It's going to be. It's, it's a good time for me to do it. I think. Yeah, I think, you know, I've said to a lot of people that although we wouldn't have wanted this time and we, you know, we don't wish it upon uh, ever again. It's been no. great. It has actually been a time for people, yeah, like ourselves to actually do something different. Because Yeah, and just, to, yeah, absolutely. Take stock a bit as well and have a little think, you know what I mean, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, time to actually breathe because sometimes you just don't have time when you're going from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. And, you know, you're worrying about, you know, how's this going to affect my family and this, that and the next thing. And what have I got to do for that? And how have I got to be? And, you know, yeah. some people don't actually, although obviously you're doing it for yourself, you don't actually take a look at yourself and take care of yourself. Exactly. exactly. You go, oh, actually you know just to sit in the garden and have a drink it's just really nice just to stop and relax exactly just take stock because life can just get in the way you know what i mean and life oh. takes over and it's yeah. important just to step back and have a little think and a reassess and it, it, it's you know as much as the devastation that it's caused i think it's been good for the environment the atmosphere and things like that so and for certain things there's there's a there's a few positives come out of it i think and yeah. it's the it's the stuff like you know taking things more less for granted and, and all yeah. that so things of like that will 
Yeah. Oh, we won't good. ever take normal for granted again. We'll always have a whinge because that's what we like. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, I think that that has definitely been a positive stake from it. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure. If you need anything ever, just you know, you've got my number. Just oh, just thanks. get in touch and all that, you know, and, and stuff. Just and any, any help I can do, just 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 give us a shout. Thank you. Do you know what? People have been so kind. No, been... it's no problem at all. I think it's brilliant what you're doing. Absolutely brilliant. And whatever you need, Jen, just just get in touch. Keep my number. And um, if you need anything, just give me a shout. And if if I can, I will I will try my best to help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I'll send you the link when it goes up onto the channel, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kai. Really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Look after yourself and good luck yes. with everything. And I mean it. If you need anything, get in touch. Thank you so much. Take care. You too, lovely. Bye. Ta-da. Bye. Huge thanks to Kai for that fantastic interview. I had such a great time. Still lots more guests to come, so here's a sneaky peek on who's coming up next. Take care everyone, have a great week and I'll see you on Saturday. Bye bye! <laughs>